succeeded you, the Lord Grey in 1907, and the Duke of Connaught in 1912. And of course, Lord Stanley became our first Reverend in 1890. We thank you for sharing this historic moment with us. Today marks the beginning of a great new era for the RCMI. We will be more active than ever in the community. We have gone well beyond being just a military officers association. We are open to all people interested in military matters and security. And it's quite a different place than it was a hundred and some years ago. I thank all our members for supporting the effort and for keeping the RCMI family strong as we march together toward a future full of promise for the next hundred years and beyond. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Colonel Jeff Dorfman. Earning the words from Winston Churchill's famous speech in November 1942. Now this is not the end. It is not even the beginning of the end. But it isn't. Excuse me. But it is perhaps the end of the beginning. Our, our journey begins with the birth of the Toronto Landmark, the RCMI, or so it was, as it was known then, the CMI. On the 29th of August, 1907, with a suitable guard of honor on hand, Earl Grey, Governor General, and patron, laid the cornerstone for which the Institute paid the munificent sum of $208.25. The silver travel used on this occasion remains a treasured relic of the Institute. Five years later, on May the 18th, 1912, the Guard of Honor chosen from all the common units, just like today, Prince Arthur, the Duke of Connaught, the Governor General of Canada, patron of the Institute, did as, as his predecessor, the Earl Grey, did and laid the next cornerstone. Today, we are completing the vision of all the long range planning that tried but never succeeded in achieving the next RCMI at 426 University Avenue. Credit needs to be given to my predecessor as president, Matthew Gazzini, who had the foresight and good judgment to appoint the late Colonel P.W. Hunter as chairman of the Long Range Planning Committee. Matthew's choice proved to be excellent because Colonel Hunter got the whole project started in the years 2006 and 2007. Peter's successful efforts are why we are here today. Peter's untimely passing has prevented him from seeing that his vision has started to come to fruition. We are pleased today to have Mrs. Wanda Hunter with us to share in our celebration. We often say that actions speak louder than words. Jewish communities, by their actions, Unwavering support has contributed monumentally to the success of our endeavor. Brass panels that embrace the front of the RCMI and University Avenue will, when they are put back in front of the new RCMI in 2013, be 200 years old. It will be a reminder for all of us in Toronto and the rest of the world where our members live that the RCMI is now in its second hundred continues to be an eminent forum of Canada's defense, security, and foreign affairs. Thank you. As a distinguished academic and legal scholar, David Johnson served at the law faculties of Queens and Toronto, was dean of the Western Law School and the principal of the Guild. He became the fifth president of the University of Waterloo just 13 years ago. On October the 1st, 2010, he became the 28th Governor General of Canada since Confederation in 1867. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency, the Right Honorable David Johnson, Governor General and Commander-in-Chief of Canada.
new chapter in the history of the Royal Canadian Military Institute the laying of the cornerstone for this remarkable new building is a proud moment for the community of Toronto and of course for Canada. It's also something as we learned on a tradition for Governor General. Two of my predecessors, Earl Gray in 1907, followed by Prince Arthur, the Duke of Knox in 1912, laid cornerstones at previous headquarters, and such an honor to follow in their footsteps today. Both of my predecessors believed that as Canadians, we must understand and respect our military traditions and history. For example, in addition to his support of this institute, Earl Grey influenced the decision to have the Plains of Abraham and the city of Quebec designated as a national park. And for his part, the Duke of Connaught, who was Governor General at the outbreak of the First World War, strongly advocated military studies and training in Canada. For more than a century, the Royal Canadian Military Institute has been preserving and promoting our military heritage. We also provide a friendly gathering place for members and affordable accommodation. We have a role unique dans notre communauté et au pays. En plus de votre histoire et un mandat exclusif. One of your most important functions is to improve public understanding of our military and political history. The museum, archive, library, art collections, as well as your publications and online resources are important educational tools for students, scholars, and the general public. I also want to commend you on your commitment to public outreach through your speaker's program and through the conferences and events you host. I'm so confident that this beautiful new home of yours will be a welcoming one. En tant que Governor General, j'estime qu'il faut saisir toutes les occasions d'apprendre qui se présentent pour arriver à créer le Canada et à qui est bien dedans, donc nous revons. Canada has a truly remarkable history. The evolving complex age in which we live demands greater understanding of military matters. We must enhance our knowledge of Canada's military, past, present, and future possibilities with an eye to building a fairer, more just, and peaceful world. It's a vastly complicated and challenging subject, and this institute is vital to our learning. I wish you many, many happy, enlightening years in your new home. I see you. Well, the military significance is what it is in the history of this on this site is, is quite significant. Uh, this is also a really famous building as part of a new Toronto because this is the first car-free condo. There's no parking in this condo. And it's a 47-story building with, with a significant number of units. And uh, what's interesting about that is that this building actually sold itself out on, on notoriety being the first car-free condo. They sold out without ever opening a sales office. People without cars were so enamored the idea of living downtown without a car, that they bought the unit so quickly they didn't have to open the sales office. So this building is not only a home to a lot of military history, it's now home to some development history too. Thank you so much, Adam.